Hello, we are Geeks Assembled and we have gathered here once again and tonight we are going to talk about a DreamWorks film, The Road to El Dorado. And we're going to kick off straight with, let's go over to Germany actually, with Beef Dad. Yes, you're up first, Beef Dad, that horrified look on your face. I love it when I make, make them horrified. Yes. <laughs> I, um, I quite enjoyed this, The Foolishness. Um, Kevin Klein and Kenneth Branagh really worked well together. They were so good. Um, doing Tulio and Mi Mi Miguel. Um, the, um, the quality of the one that I watched wasn't brilliant. Um, but I, I quite enjoyed it. And it surprised me when I found out that Elton John did the narration on it. Um, I quite enjoyed some of the music. I did quite enjoy some of the music. I mean, obviously it's not of the quality as something like Frozen, but um, it was it was enjoyable. It was enjoyable. It's it's just a sort of relaxing thing that you don't need to think about it. Um, the only sad thing about it is, of course, it's uh, the story of how the Spanish invaded um, the Incas and Aztecs, and, that, and it's been done for children. But there is nothing really in it to show that what the Spanish did to them was awful because they practically wiped them out. And, uh, yeah, I, I, th I think, yeah, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have hurt to have put in a little, um, a little bit of, uh, well, what would you call it? Um, real history? Yeah, a little bit of real history and um, pro uh, disapproval of the way the Spanish acted. Um, yeah, that, that I would have liked to have seen. Um, but again, as I said, it's very entertaining. Um, you don't have to think about it. You just sit back, watch and let it flow over you. Exactly, and I'm not adding any more to that because that could go down the wrong path. Uh, let's go to Lee. <laughs> Just let it you flow went, over you, Lee. Let it flow over you. <laughs> I don't think you about went, you it went, when it's flowing over you. Yeah. <laughs> you. You went down the wrong path years ago. Um, and, and you know, Lee, it's, it's, it can't be as good as Frozen. I agree on that. Good big tag. Mm, yes, I think he's just trying to wind everybody up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree with Beef Dad. It's a, it is a sugar-coated tale of what the Spanish did to the Incas and the um, Aztecs. Um, it's an enjoyable movie. Um, I, I wish there was a bit more to it because it, it just didn't seem to... It, it sort of just plodded along until like, well, I don't know, maybe the last 20 minutes when the, all the action was trying to, you know, save the, the El Dorado from Cortez arriving. Um, yeah, Kenneth Branagh and, and um, Kevin Klan did work well together. I, I was surprised at that, but, you know, Kenneth Branagh, Royal Shakespeare, an actor, um, you know, living it up as an animated character. Uh, it was quite, quite enjoyable. Um, yeah, um, Elton John and uh, Tim Rice doing the music. Yeah, the, 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 the work, they've collaborated before and um, they've worked well before, but um, the music was fine. It was very rememberable. Um, they have done, Elton John has done better for, uh, for movies, but uh, enjoyable. I say, as you get, as, as people said, you can sit back, watch it from beginning to end. And you don't have um, any problems with it. There was some slight things I'm thinking. Oh, this is you know for little kids and, and for grown. But there was like the um, part where I can't remember the character's name. The the, the, the young lass, the young girl, was um, well, was on the floor with um, Kevin Klan's character. 
Uh, I mean, do you put that in a in an animated movie? Um, I don't know. That, that, that I don't know. That that shouldn't have been there. I don't think. But that's just me. Um, yeah. That's, no, no, no. I'm, I'm just thinking. I wasn't expecting that. And then with his remark, you know, what what would the what the, the comment was? Oh, what would this someone say if this caught us in this position? And Kevin Clyde's character said, "They'd say, lucky God." And I'm thinking, no, nah, th- th- this is for you know from six upwards or whatever five upwards age age range. You don't put that in a animated movie if you if you are having youngsters watching this as well. So I don't know. I mean, it wasn't grotesque, you know, gratuitous, um, but. Yeah, but can I just add, Lee, a lot of these animated films do have um, more mature... Uh, yes. More mature, you know, well, that, too. Yeah, well, as, that, yes, but if that was the case, if that was the case, as going back to what Beef Dad said, why didn't they put more realism, realistic history into this? Yeah, cause, probably because that's different. And they're not trying to go for realism, are they? Well, no, but... Not well, meant, why, it's not meant to be realistic. Yeah. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is, be true to the history, but mm. but why put Hanky Panky in it? You know what I mean? Yeah. But it was it was an enjoy, enjoyable you rant movie. Over now, ladies, you, you rant over. That's all right. <laughs> oh, that's that's it for now. Over back to you, Alid. Let it flow okay, over you. No, 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 Hanky Panky Lee. Thank you. No, Hanky yeah. Panky Lee. Let's go over to Brian, since Susan's away. What do you make of this film, Brian? Stop reading up on it on Wikipedia and tell us what you think. No, I was looking up something else. <laughs> no, we don't want to know. <laughs> Give your opinion on the film. <laughs> the mind you, yeah, Don't tell us what you were looking up, please. I'll tell you later. <laughs> but anyway. Um... How about not at all? <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, the, road to El- the Road to El Dorado. Honestly, um, I thought it was a good, decent film, a good, decent, enjoyable film to watch. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a movie that I've never seen before by DreamWorks. Uh, this is mostly my first time I've seen it. So I thought it, I, I, I enjoyed it. So, um, I mean, it was, I thought it was just like the script and the story was, a, a a simple a simple story for the movie i mean it's just two two people just going about and doing that, that like thieving and conning and everything until they actually come across a map that lead that leads them to a hidden utopian city that apparently they think it of like God worshiping and everything. And they think the people of that tribe and city think that they're the gods and everything. And it's just, I thought that was just hilarious because it, it, the way that the characters look and design and the way they act and everything, no fucking way that they're gods. They couldn't even be like they couldn't even be gods if they were actually gods in the first place. I don't think that they would actually last long. <laughs> but um, uh, and the what's the uh, char- what's that character's name that ended up to be like the bad guy and everything? Anybody know? Anybody remember? Secret hands. You mean Cortez? Yes, Cortez, yes. Cortez, I knew from straight off the bat he was going to be the main antagonist of the film, and also I had a feeling that he would have, like, these godlike powers him, him, himself to begin with because just the way that he was and acted within the film, I knew that he would be the antagonist and chaos and everything, so... That wasn't Cortez. What? That wasn't Cortez. Seek El Khan. Then why did you say Cortez for? 
Well, I would just toss him in out there. You agreed. Did you watch the movie? I did do watch the movie. It was on Netflix. I watched it, okay? Hey, 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 hey this, 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 this is a no tossing zone. Carry on, Brian. And, I did not uh, watch the highlights. Susan, I know you guys put that in my face. I did not watch the highlights. Susan, you're going to need to make an edit, by the way. <laughs> when you watch this back, you'll find out why. <laughs> Go on, Brian, carry on. No, but, um, anyway, um, I do enjoy the movie. I, I, I do enjoy the movie that I watched. It was just a simple premise and little things in there made me laugh. I mean, it made me laugh and it was enjoyable to watch. And yes, Lee is right. There's some um, little bit adult themes within within one scene and everything. But I it didn't really matter to me. I thought I didn't, didn't really mind it. I just leave and had to leave it or take it. So it just because who knows? I don't know. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I enjoy this film. I would give this a thumbs up of a film. I thought you were going to score it there. I thought, no, 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 don't score it. Um, let's go to Susan oh, and Alex. Yet. Let's go to Susan and Alex. See what they think. Thank then we'll you, go to Alex. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. It was kind of goofy and stuff. I thought that the animation was sort of clunky and stuff, but it was all right. Uh, um, <clears throat> they did talk about, I mean, even though they, they weren't really doing historical accuracy, there was a story back in, in the, in the time before those, uh, those conquistadors made it to the, the new world. That that there would be a guy, a white guy, who would be, um, who would be a god to them, and uh, not sure if it was the Aztecs per se, but it it was definitely one of the Native American myths that 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 exist. <clears throat> anyway, so. I, I kind of I, I saw that these guys being welcomed into the tribe like that were were cool and and I love I love even though I, I love the scenery I, um, even though the faces were were weird to me the I love the scenery I love like the epic uh, the epic city of gold. The epic El Dorado was really, really, truly epic. Anyway, so that was that. And here's Alex. Um, yeah, to me, this was a weird combination of the Emperor's New Clothes and a little bit of the Lion King, probably because Elton John was singing the songs. Um I mean, I was impressed with a couple of the voice actors, including Rosie Perez, who usually is not known for her speaking voice. She has become a better actress in the last 30 years. Uh, she was a little similar to Jennifer Lopez in the, fa in the fact that she was originally a dancer. She wasn't an actress at the beginning. She was a dancer and then branched off into other roles. Um, yeah, I couldn't say that I'd enjoy this film per se. I mean, if it was the only other thing I would watch during the day, maybe I'd watch it. But no, I wouldn't make a special point of watching it. Um, and if I really want a, an animated Disney epic, I can watch something else. Um, the uh, Yeah, I can understand why this didn't make a lot of money. It uh, kind of glosses over a lot of things. You could have this as a TV movie. Really wouldn't make a huge amount of difference. Uh, the plot is very basic. Uh, it is for kids. Obviously, they can't show the 
you know, they can't really, sh yeah, they can't really show, you know, the real, even side stories as to what's going on. And yeah, they probably shouldn't have had the adult jokes that they had in the movie. But it's an animated movie, and there's always a few companies, and there's always a few instances where they try to sneak some sort of triple entendre or, or whatever into the movie. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was kind of glad when this was over. Uh, there's only a few animated things that I like, and I'd rather watch The Little Mermaid, even though that had some things under the radar as well. Uh, but as I said, uh, they did do a TV version of it. They did have the Emperor's New Clothes, which this reminded me of that animation as well. Um, yeah, I mean, it didn't, it didn't really impress me. So I can understand that it didn't make a lot of money. But again, it'd be a very different animated movie if they showed a lot more of what was actually going on. <laughs> Thanks for that, Susan and Alex. And let's go over to Rob. Rob, what did you make of this? Did you enjoy it? I tell you what, I identified with the movie. Uh, reminded me of the time that I was worshipped as a god down in Mexico. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, actually, while I was watching the movie, I, I had to go to the bathroom and stand up on the toilet because that was the only way I could get high on pot to be able to make it through the movie. Um, I, no, seriously, I, I did like the movie. I, I, as far as something to go see in the theaters, no, I, I would have been disappointed. If I caught it on the Disney Channel, I would have been fine with it. I mean, it's DreamWorks, you know? Every, DreamWorks art, in my opinion, doesn't really change all that much from movie to movie. I mean, it, it kind of, you know, it's, they're animators and they have a style. Uh, as far as the, I, I agree with Lee uh, and, and the others who have said, you know, maybe they should, I mean, I understand why they did. They were trying to get that, you know, adult humor under the radar like all cartoons have all the way back to Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck. But the sad thing about it is they didn't deliver it well. They, they messed up on it. And so that's the thing because it did stand out so bad is because they didn't present it well. If they would have present, I mean, heck, even like with Batman 66, there was tons of adult humor in there. But as a kid, you miss it because they knew how to package it. Uh, that being said, uh, I like the movie because I felt like it was given homage. Some of my favorite movies are the Bob Hope and, uh, and uh, Bing Crosby Road 2 uh, series. And I really enjoy those. I mean, I've, I've got every one of those on DVD. But on the other hand, that's kind of why I was a little bit disappointed because it was almost like I'd seen it done way too many times. That's me. You know, I'm sure the kids enjoy it. I'm not disappointed that it wasn't historical. I mean, it's a cartoon and nuts. Cartoons always botch up the historical stuff. Anyhow, just look at Pocahontas. I mean, come on. Pocahontas was, you know. So I'm not, I enjoy the fact that they did a story behind this story. And it was silly. It was predictable. I understand why it lost money. But, you know, I'm, I guess I'm, I had a rough time getting through it. I watched it late, so I won't hold that against it. It might have just been me being tired. But for a movie cartoon, I felt it came in really short. I did enjoy the performances. I don't think anybody did a poor performance. Kevin Klein was good. I love Armada Asante. I mean, he's one of my favorite actors. So I, I, I really, I, in my opinion, 
I think he really stole the role as being evil. But I think they ruined it when they had him meeting Cortez and they did the whole God thing again. I mean, they should have ended it different. They should have had a different ending. But, you know, I, like I said, TV movie, great. Theater movie, no. I, I, I wouldn't have wanted to pay money at that. So, anyhow, uh, I guess that's me. Thanks, Rob. And I have to agree with Rob that everybody gives a really good performance. But I also have to agree with Beef Dad that the music isn't as good as some other animated films. And I also agree with Alex that this does remind me of a blend between um, The Emperor's New Groove, which I really like, and The Lion King. That could be because of Elton John, um, like Alex says. But this film, I chose this film because I thought nobody here would have seen it. And I thought not many people at the cinema went to see it at the time. And I remember watching this and thinking this was a really good film. So when I watched it the other day, well, the other day, I said, say the other month now on Netflix, and because it's, it's on Netflix. And I just thought this is a really good film. I really enjoy this. It's, it's fun. It's got great animation. I, I just love the animation. Like Susan mentions, uh, the scenery and the look and the color of it all is brilliant. I, I like the faces though. Susan wasn't keen on the faces, but I like the animated faces. I like what they did with that. Um, yeah, it was a brilliant film. I think it's just fun and it's funny. And yes, there's a bit of, suppose you can say, adult humour, but to be honest, I don't notice it. Maybe that says a lot about me. I don't know. I don't notice the adult humour, I mean. <laughs> you know, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoy this film. It's not the best animated film. It is the last um, hand-drawn DreamWorks animation film ever since this. They vowed never ever to do hand-drawn animation films again. So every film since has been a 3D animation from DreamWorks because this bombed so much. Because at the time, you had Shrek coming out around this time, didn't you, about 2000? You had Shrek and other things like that. And of course, you had, you had Ants, A Bug's Life already. You'd also had Toy Story a few years before. So... It, the road was really going towards 3D animation. I didn't and, realize that this was the last one that they'd done hand-drawn. Yeah, this is was the last much, one they'd done hand-drawn, yeah. Much more labor-intensive. Yeah. Just and forgive the, me for all, everything I said about the animation. And the, they, after this, they vowed never to do another 2D animation, uh, which they haven't, as far as I know. They, they've actually stuck to that. They haven't done another 2D animation, no. So... Yeah, so that's, and I, it's really forgotten. This film is forgotten. And I don't think it deserves to be forgotten because I think it's good enough as a film and as an animated film to be at least remembered somewhat rather than just left in the corner sort of thing. Anyway, let's go to favorite moments. Anybody have any favorite moments they'd like to shout about? I love the moment where Cortez's horse and they jump off the boat. Um, and the, the business with the with the small boat um, and it ends up with Cortez's horse sitting in the in the boat. It just looked absolutely brilliant. Um, that that really amused me. Um, Armando Santi playing Seke, Seke Khan. Um, absolutely obsessed with human sacrifice. Um, every five minutes he was coming out about doing humans doing a sacrifice. Um, that that uh, that that was one of the things where I think if you showed the reality of the situation there. Um, it probably wouldn't have been allowed to be seen by children. Um, and the bit where he 
summons the sort of devil animal made of stone. But that was that was good. I I quite enjoyed that bit and the way he chased through and ended up in the whirlpool. I like that. That was that was that was good. And uh, yeah, the yeah the whole, the horse really did it for me. To be perfectly honest, the horse really did it for me. Uh, I love I loved that. It, it, it was every time the horse came on screen, I thought, oh, brilliant, <laughs> good bit. <laughs> Anyone else want to jump in, Rob? Yeah. Let let me say something. Um, the things that the things that stand out in my mind are the times where they made fun of the cartoon, the things that we think in our mind. For example, like when when he you know the map he pulled out of nowhere, and it's like <laughs> out of everything that you saved, you know the map, and and where did you have it? And I can't remember what the little girl pulled out. But I think Kevin Klein said the same thing about that. Whatever she pulled out. Oh, the dice, the dice. Uh, he said, where, where did she hide it at? You know, and, and that's one of those adult humors. Uh, but the kids get that. The kids, the kids aren't thinking, well, hopefully they're not thinking dirty. But uh, that's one of those adult humor moments that transcends both youth and adult. Because yeah, that's something we're both thinking about. You know, she ain't got no clothes. Where did she hide the dice? And, and so whenever a show makes fun of itself, I think those minutes and moments stand out because, you know, I'm thinking that too. Where the heck was all this stuff at, you know? So I, th those, those are the things that come to my mind and I think are funny, anyhow. Go on, Lee. Yes, go on. Well, no, actually, I, no, let's go to Susan. No, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with Beef Dad. Um, oh, don't know. Oh, that's a very dangerous thing to do. I know, I know. No, I know. Uh, have I know. you took your meds? Uh, it, it, I think he's been rubbing off on me. Um, As, oh, my like, God. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 you have got a smutty mind, Ali. Um What I was saying was, I agree with Beef Dad. The horse is just one of the is one of the best characters in the movie. It, uh, and I it enjoyed gives it so much personality. Yeah, yeah, yeah so much yeah. personality. Well, oh, but, and the scene where he was summoning the jaguar spirit into the statue that was so brilliantly done but uh, also I like the the scene of the, the football match the, the, or soccer as the, our friends over the sea call it you know trying to get the ball through the, the hoop mm -hmm. way up there use, using the um, was it an armadillo, armadillo yeah. yeah 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 that that, that was a good scene that, that match was brilliantly done <laughs> that's all I have to say now um, I'm, I'm going to sit here in the corner and be quiet Oh, good. Flipping heck. How many, <laughs> how many years has it taken for that to happen? Let's go so, to... <laughs> you're so, so, um, I really like the, the bits where, um, where he's summoning the animal and, um, the panther god. And you know what I really liked? I liked the, the, that it kind of, that the whole thing kind of reminded me of, of the Aztecs you know, episode of Doctor Who, because, I mean, here they are, and there's Barbara Wright, well, these other two blokes, anyway, um, you know, pretending to be gods, and then, you know, suddenly they disappear, and everything sort of collapses around them. Very similar. Anyway, that's my bit. Yeah, oh, I wish I could say that I could see that. But. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, there was a few scenes, you know, like I said, the background was good, you know, the, the showing the the environments where they were in. Uh, I did enjoy Rosie Perez's performance. Um, 
the horse did have a lot of personality. I mean, it was almost it was almost breaking the fifth wall, the fact that the horse had more personality than the rest of the cast almost. Um, the horse shouldn't outdo the cast, unless, of course, that's another joke to the never work with children and animals. Um, so, yeah, I, I understand they wanted to keep it light, but it just, I don't know, it's... It's a little, maybe they were trying to do a, a mishmash or I don't remember how many people were writing the story or directing it. Uh, but yeah, if it was a TV movie, I would have liked it a lot better. Yeah, but if you think about it, Alex, yeah. every animation film with a horse always has a horse with a lot of personality. Well, he, he had a lot. I mean, he was if almost... You, if you look at Tangled and... Yeah. Yeah, frozen with the reindeer. Of course, it was a reindeer, yeah. but yeah. always have strong personalities. Yeah, no, ooh, but but ooh. but the horse had enough for three people. Uh, <laughs> I was almost wondering if he was going to change into a human or or whatever. Yeah, but uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it. I would have liked it a lot more. I would have held it in high regard if it had been a TV movie as opposed to a, a full length movie. Um. But like I said, it, it's not that it's bad. I just think it's it's probably trying to do too many things at once. It's trying to be a comedy. It's trying to be a buddy movie. It's trying to have singing. It's trying to have a plot. It's doing an American plot. Then it's trying to do a, a very watered-down Spanish plot. And then the human sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, after a while, I just kind of went, I don't know. Is that the only nod that they're going to admit? The, the society, you know, wasn't that nice or modern or whatever. Um, it was cute to see them trying to put the the ball in the weird sideways hoop. That was kind of funny. Uh, it was nice that even when the, I don't know, the high priest, I guess you call him, uh, wanted the losers to be killed. Uh, you know, they didn't allow that and they didn't let that go on. But again, it is a children's movie, so they, they probably wouldn't have allowed that. But it is ironic that they even mentioned it because I said to myself, hmm, so what, kids are going to watch this and go, Mom, what's human sacrifice? <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Brian, what are your favorite moments? It's my turn. <laughs> yep, you're the only Brian in the group. Or an I know. Okay. Um I think I think my first probably favorite moment is the um that the little montage that they have like at the beginning of like them trying to find the um like the uh hidden city and everything from from when I like, uh, the song play and everything, it's like uh, the horse and the two characters, the, the two of them, like, finding everything. And the, as they go along, one of them is having, like, really bad luck and everything. Because, like, um, like, he gets, like, little leeches on his back when he goes in the water and... Um, and all the other shit that's going on as well. I just, um, I thought that was like pretty hilarious. So I thought that is probably my first favorite moment. Um, uh, my second favorite moment is the, the little, um, the uh, little ball game scene. Uh, I thought that was pretty good I, because um very um different way to play a sport <laughs> uh never because that's not mostly one of the sports here <laughs> or anything like that oh, oh it is over here it is yeah I play three times a week well there you go <laughs> um, and I think mostly my last moment my last favorite moment is um 
at the end when they came up with the idea to uh, protect the city with the boat and knock down the two um, the two things with the boat and everything. So, because I thought that was like a really cool, handy idea, and uh, the sequence and the the act, the sequence with in the scene and also the scene itself, I thought was just amazing. But due to the fact they just lost all the gold, with, with all the gold when they did it, did it, I thought that was pretty funny and everything. So uh, yeah, I think those are pretty much my three top favorite moments within the film. Yeah, no, I I like the ending actually. I enjoyed the ending. Beef Dad, were you gonna were you gonna say something? No, just having a. Yeah, it's for breath. Okay. And Brian, your language has got quite a lot stronger. Um, <laughs> since what do you the, mean? Well, <laughs> you've been swearing, you've been... <laughs> Who have you been hanging we around with? Have, we will be having words after we've done this, Cass, Brian. Uh-oh. Someone's getting kicked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't, it wouldn't get, surprise me if I did. You know, I, it, it wouldn't surprise me if I did because that's what Lee does. Hey. Oh, okay. So, right, does anybody else want to add anything else? Yes, Lee. Yes. Where's that finger going? Uh, yeah, I, I, I would just like to say. There was a, there's a there's a scene. Yes, there's many there's scenes. A, yes, that's what makes a film. There's a, yeah, no, there's a, <laughs> there's a scene. That you blink. You, there's, a, there's a you blink. You miss it, and it's where the big chief knows that these two guys are not gods, and he turns around and says, "Human." Yeah. And that that was quite a little a little touching scene. That, but you blink, it's got it's over with, and you know. But I, I like that little scene. So he knew all along they were not gods, but he yeah. went along. He went along with them. Went along with it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that you. insight, Lee. Yes. Yeah. Anybody else have anything to add? Otherwise, we're going to wrap it up. Nope. Well, we're going to wrap it up then. Let's have let's have Brian score first. Final saying score, Brian. Oh, back to me then. Okay. Yeah, back to uh, you. Uh, yep. Yeah. Remember, Brian, you're the only one called Brian in this group. <laughs> so when I say your name, uh, I, I, I'm coming I, I, to you. I just thought that you would go to like to anybody else in here because I just went with the uh, favorite scenes. Okay, well we'll go to Lee then, shall we? No, 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 don't. I could do it. I could. <laughs> yeah. I, I could do it. No. Um, Are you sure? I don't. I don't want to trouble you. No, Ali. Okay, we'll go with I'm you. I'm laughing just... so hard right now. <laughs> uh, no, but. Okay, I think I would give this film probably a 7 out of 10. Oh, 7 out of 10, that's pretty decent. Let's go to, uh, let's see who's not eating. Everybody seems to be eating. Uh, let's go to Beef Dad. <laughs> Why is only everybody eating? <laughs> I'm only not eating because I ran out of chocolate. Um, yeah, it's... <laughs> It's a good film for kids. Um, it's not. It's not one for the adults. And as a, as a kids' film, <coughs> as a children's film, yeah, I would give it a seven out of ten. Oh, another seven. Um, let's go to Alex and Susan before Susan takes another bite. It's very funny. Very funny, Alan. Yeah, hilarious. Okay, um, I will give it, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Yeah, 8, because I won't give it a 9 because um, it's not the most memorable Elton John songs anyway. He's written better ones. Yeah. Here's, yeah. here's Alex. Um, yeah, um. I I don't even know if I'd call this a, a kids movie per se. Um, 
I think it's more like a tween movie in a way, uh, with a little bit of a little bit of references to the old, the old school. Yeah, I did notice that moment where the the king said, "You know, to air is human." I was like, "Oh," <laughs> and funny how you know he didn't finish the rest of that saying. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, I don't know. I, I don't know if they just had trouble writing this or they wanted to put little touches in it. Um, I just felt like it was all over the place. At one point, it's the Emperor's New Groove. Then the other point, they're trying to, uh, you know, have some Aztec or pre-Spanish uh, inspiration. But then they put in the human sacrifice and then the villain, if the villain can come up with a stone creature that can't be defeated or almost can't be, then why at the end of the movie does he get caught? I mean, as, as fun as that is that he gets caught and hauled away, if he has superpowers, which he kind of does, because you don't just summon a creature to attack people, that doesn't make a lot of sense that he's hauled away. So it's kind of like... Eh. Alex, stop nitpicking. <laughs> well, but I mean, it is a slight it's point. I mean, you know, that's a good point. I mean, <laughs> even I went, you know, how does he get caught so easy? And then it's she's a cartoon. She's a cartoon. No, I know, I know yeah. but I mean, it's it's all over the place. So I mean, if I was going to show it to a twelve well, year old, it's, it's you know, mostly gold, yeah. I mean, I'd say yeah, and no human sacrifice. So just pretend they don't say that part. Um. But other than that, yeah, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, I didn't really enjoy it. I'd probably give it a I'd probably give it a six, and maybe I'd show it to tweens if there was nothing else at all. I'd rather go to something British or or something else that actually would be less less visually appealing, but actually would make more uh, consistent sense. And I think they were all over the place. Thank you for that, Alex. Let's go to Rob. <laughs> a six. We'll get him afterwards. Don't worry. Hey, there we go. Wait, let me take another bite of my sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't... I think DreamWorks was wimping out when they said, oh, we'll never do another 2D animation. I, I don't think a 3D animation would have saved the storyline. That's what made this movie sink. It was the storyline and the way things were presented. Uh, gosh, I, I'm the newbie here, and y'all know I'm, I'm pretty hard with uh, the review that I give. I... I, because I, 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 I don't know, maybe, maybe I don't know how to review movies, but the thing is, I'm not disappointed with the animation. Uh, I'm not disappointed with the actors, man. I think everybody called in a good game and that's what they do. You can do this stuff at home. If you're an actor, you know, just like Eddie Murphy did with Shrek, you know, it's, it's, it's called in. And it, 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 you know, and I mean, come on, it's Kevin Klein. I think Kevin Klein is funny in anything that he does. And I don't, I don't think that they made the movie bad. I think, I think we're dealing with, I don't know, just a poor presentation. And, and, and I believe me, I love what they were trying to do with the tribute to, Bob and Bing. I mean, that's great. I love that. But the fact of the matter is, that's not something that can transition to children. I mean, those movies were adult movies. You didn't want to, I mean, I didn't let my kids watch them because they were adult movies. And so here, this is what they were trying to do. And I want to give it a higher grade just because I appreciate the tribute. But there was nothing new. It wasn't, it wasn't a fresh storyline. It wasn't anything exciting. 
uh, maybe if I was a kid, I'd give it a higher rating, but I'm going to be nice and I'm going to give it a five and a half just because. Dear, dear viewers, Rob will not be back next week. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go to our supreme leader, our God. Let's go to Lee. All praise, Lee. Yes, I give it 7.5. There you go, over to you, Alid. Oh, thank you, Lee. I will give it, do you know what? I'm going to give it an 8. It's a good film. I really enjoy it. It's fun. and. It deserves to be watched and it deserves to be, um, you know, given a chance by more people, I think, because I think it's a fun film. It's, and you know, like I say, it's great animation. Nobody puts a bad performance in. Um, it's just fun. So I'm going to give it an eight and tell us below what you make of The Road to El Dorado if you've seen it. I'd like to thank everybody here for, for joining me, you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And remember to stay up to date with all our videos. You do have to hit that subscribe button. But why you would want to, I don't know. So, dear viewer, lone viewer, look after yourself. Take care. We will see you next time. And that lone viewer is actually Lee. <laughs>